today we're going to be talking about uh, what everybody's kind of been talking about in the news, which is what happens when you buy a home in Chicago, suburbs. Yes. We're talking about this new trend to buying homes in the suburbs. I don't know that I would call it a trend yet. Uh, it might just be media hype, but we are seeing strong activity in the suburbs. And you and I are going to talk a little bit about what one gets in the million dollar range if you choose to buy in the suburbs versus the city. Yes. And there are a couple of things, you know, we, we do hear about the news that, oh, wow, everyone's buying in the suburbs. But on some level, it is also, um, as we've said before, millennials are buying right now. And often millennials buy a, a first home or, or start a first home in the suburbs. So it is not entirely unusual that activity has picked up in the suburbs. Yeah, my take on it is when, when my kids were little, and I want to say like in the early grade school years, so that would have been about 15 to 20 years ago, uh, many of my friends bought in the suburbs so that they could put their kids in the public schools there. Now, what they got was a bigger yard, uh, you know, a bigger lot, but they were paying about 30 to 50 percent more in property taxes yes. for that benefit. And they had, oh gosh, they probably had an hour commute. I mean, the only way you get 30 minutes or less is if you're in Oak Park or maybe Evanston and work on the north side of the city. But, uh, you know, they're looking at an hour commute. So that was kind of the juggle when my kids were young. So We've seen this trend where the home prices in the suburbs have come down. Anecdotally, I've heard where people, for example, are selling their homes for what they bought them for 20 years ago. I think what we're, and this is just my, I, this will be my next thing to show statistically, but my sense is as our city property taxes rise, as the home values in the suburbs decline, because some of these houses were sitting on the market for a couple of years, there came this tipping point where some people said, well, maybe I'll look at the suburbs because on a dollar for dollar value, maybe it's worth it. Um, you but and I are going to explore what one gets for a million dollars and the pros and cons of each. So we're really going to look at that, right? Well, one of the things, so I did take, I took a look at, um, as you and I talked about, we're going to talk about, I, I looked at the North Shore, you looked at the, the near Western, the nice yeah. western suburbs mm -hmm. and um and pri home values across 20 the last three years in the north shore are remarkably stable very little growth i didn't bring those stats to you but because it was just a straight line across yeah. all of these suburbs so i don't see the prices coming down i see steady mm -hmm. One and two, um, I think some of that is due to the fact that um, you know state and local taxes aren't deductible. So right, oh, very good point. So buying more tax, going to a place with a higher tax, you're just paying more tax. Right. Um, you're not getting this deduction. The financial benefit, any one of the tax. Yep. Yeah, or the or the or the easing of the burden. Right. from that tax um, exemption or deduction. I forget whether it's an exemption or a deduction, mm -hmm. but either way, tax benefit. So um, I think that's one of the things that has made the last several years um, sales in the suburbs dip so so significantly because they have such a, a, a smaller tax base to cover fire, schools, sidewalks, sewer, all the things, all the right. taxing districts that we pay in the city, we have a much bigger tax base, much larger population to share those costs. So that's right. why our tax, our generally our tax rate is 6.767%. And in the suburbs, especially the Northern suburbs, it's like eight point something percent. So it just gives you a sense of that difference. But anyway, yeah. we're gonna talk more. let's start with some hot sheet. What do you say? Okay, good. So we did, uh, because we're um, boring, no, I'm boring. She's never boring, Anne's never boring. Um, I've got the um, gold coat, well, the 
the near north side hot sheet. Great. Uh, you see, I, it seems to think that I want to look. Where our office is located, it's where we do a lot of business. Let's see what's going yeah. on. And it's a lot of where um, the protests have been. So, um, uh, or not the protest, the protests have been felt, visibly felt. Michigan Avenue, the area around the near north, so the near north side. Right. So as we start, and nobody is surprised that there's not much activity in single family and home, detached singles. As you can see, this is a, a week, the last week, and also people, it's the end of August. It's right. Been, this is the slowest week. Slowest okay. week. But um, a number of, and I was so delighted to see a friend of mine's um, house uh, closed after a number of years on the market. It's a beautiful house. It's one of those beautiful mansion, big houses on State Parkway. And it closed for 3.250 um, last week. I was delighted to see that. Um, but you'll see not a, not a whole lot happening, not a lot on the market and not a lot, um, Attack. But then we look at attached singles. So 37 condos, townhouses, um, were uh, put under contract, of which uh, 22 were under $500,000. So right. half um, under $500,000. And um, and only one in uh, uh, one multi million um, in the uh, what's that one called? You know, the one at 451 East Grand. What's it? Uh, something Bennett Park, one Bennett Park. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Then, um, then we have a lot of new inventory of new. online. Remember, mm -hmm. this will be canceled and relists in addition mm -hmm. to new. We have 106 new properties. And then we have um, 62 price changes. Wow. Yeah. That is a lot of price changes. And remember, the reason that's a lot, and as Anne has commented, a lot of people do price changes secretly through a cancel relist at a new and lower level. So this is, this is actually remarkable that people are using the price change um, to signify that the prices have gone down. I prefer it because then you sort of don't have to do the research to figure out, well, was this a cancel relist and a price change? Right. Um, so it really does call it out. Then um, a few reactivated and reactivated means that people were, that took it off the market for a little bit of time and now they put it back on or deals have fallen apart. I've been watching this one at, um, at the Brownstone on State Parkway, 14D. Um, oh, that went under contract. It's no longer under contract. Yep. Um, and then a few temporarily no showings. And I, you know, we're sort of out of the COVID period, so I don't know what's going on. Maybe they're doing work. Maybe they're reevaluating things. And then the canceled, these are usually the canceled and relists and there are 80. Right. And then, but a bunch of clothes. Look at this, 42 clothes properties. Yay, near north side. Good to see. A few expired listings. Sometimes those are just, they've run out of time and they'll come right back on the market with the same agent. Sometimes they'll come on with a different agent. And then we've got uh, just 19 that are ready to close probably next week or the week after. This means all of the contingencies are gone um, and that they're ready to close. And then just, um, this is a cancel, no, they're two, two um, multi-unit ones. For, mm -hmm. for okay. That's it. All right. I'm gonna stop share and toss it back to you. All right, well, as we were preparing and talking about this, I wanted to say, okay, between 900,000 and a million one, what is the typical house in uh, Chicago? What does it cost and what, what are the statistics of it? So, whoops, I'm gonna share this with you. 
Here we go. Do you see my screen here? I do. Okay, good. So this is the typical Chicago house if you were looking for between 900 and a million one. This is the area that I used for this. The typical house is uh, 16,002 in taxes, which is about where I tell my clients that uh, about 1.5% of market value. Sometimes it goes up, new construction is generally higher, you should think 2% of sales price. But generally between the 1.5 and the 2% of sales price is where you can expect to pay in taxes. So the typical home would have almost 10 rooms, and by this I mean bedrooms plus living, dining, kitchen, you know, oftentimes we call a foyer a room, uh, family, whatever. So um, the typical would have 9.8 rooms, 4.4 bedrooms. So, you know, that's, if you're going to spend for a million dollars, you can get typical four bedrooms, three full baths, two half baths, and uh, 37, 31 square feet. So you can get a really nice home in these areas. It's going to vary, of course. The closer you get to the Gold Coast and the Loop, the more expensive the home's going to be. Like Lincoln Park's more expensive on a square foot basis than Lakeview. You know, Irving Park and Avondale are much cheaper. That's so, again, that's just an average. Okay. So now I wanted to look at the median sales price. We've talked about this before, and we've hit an all time high in median sales price for single family homes in this market at 405,000. New statistics will come out soon. Um, the month supply of homes in total is 4.5 months. So it's still a seller's market in general. But then when we look at the price range that you and I are talking about today, I found this highly significant. The Month supply of single family homes in Chicago right now between or 900,000 and over is 9.7 months. That is a buyer's, buyer's, buyer's market. It's yeah. way over the six months level. But I wanted to show you, remember in 2009, 10, 11, That's we had almost 30 months. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That is so, crazy. um, if we're up at 9.7, yeah, we're higher, but we're certainly not at anything panic level. It's just, you know, a balancing of the marketplace here. And as we've seen, this includes new construction in the numbers too. So if some developer puts a property on the market that's not gonna be available for six months, that's included in this month supply statistic. Now, I wanted to show you this because I thought this was fascinating. And this is um, the percent of last list price. Sellers will say, I'll just put it on and we're gonna, you know, if somebody wants it, they'll throw me an offer. Well, look at this. This is the same time period of what I showed you when we had 30 months of inventory, homes were still selling between 94 and 96 and a half percent of list price. So when we had 30 months. Last list price. We'll talk about that afterwards. Go ahead. Yes. You're exact. Well, that's part of this conversation. You're exactly right. This is last list price, meaning people, the fish isn't biting on the hook until it's the right price, right? Yes. So when a seller says, let me just put it on higher, they'll throw me a bid. Wrong, 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 wrong. What you want to do is you're going to have to keep lowering it. You may have to cancel and put it on new. You may have to show it via price change, whatever. Do what you need to do to get within that sweet spot, right? So that they will give you an offer. So whether it's 30 months of inventory or, you know, up here where maybe there was four months of inventory or over here where there's nine months of inventory, you're still needing to reduce your price till you get it within that 5% of where the market will bear. And that's when you will get your offer. I have had twice this year, only twice, sellers who've listened to me and listed it at where it was going to sell. Mm -hmm. And it has, both of those sold at 100% or higher, can't say what, than the list price. 
because we are in the top and we started there and they sold in under two weeks. So the point is this concept of, oh, I really want room to negotiate. What you're doing is hurting yourself. Exactly. That's simple, hurting yourself. Now we'll do whatever you say because we are here to represent you, but why go on a journey that's going to get you no place? Start right, do it correctly. Mm -hmm. You'll be in a much better place. Yeah, anyway. absolutely right. I'm off my okay. soapbox. So that was mine. Now I'm going to toss that's it back to you. Interesting. Well, I, sir, I did very much of a similar thing. I approached it. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I got us. Um, so you're moving to the burbs. So you're, you've decided COVID. I need, personally, I need more space. I can't go through another lockdown in a, um, in a condo. I'm moving to the burbs. Okay. Let's say you're sort of making an even trade because um, you, you want space. So you're moving from your beautiful condo, and I've just used this as an example. This, the owner of this condo is not necessarily moving to the burbs. I don't even know the owner of this condo. <laughs> but I'm just using this as an example. It's okay. at 1240 North Lakeshore Drive, um, unit 32A. It's a beautiful four bedroom, 3.1 bath, 2200 square foot. It has no private outdoor space, but uh -huh. it is steps from the lakefront, steps from Lincoln Park. The taxes are $14,800 um, and the HOA, homeowner's assessment, the cost of living in the building is $2,071 a month. That's an expensive building. It's an old, it's a, I think it was built in the 70s. It's not, uh, or early 70s, it's not a cheap building and you can't have a dog. Okay. So you have cats. So the reasons to live here, my gosh, you are looking at Lake Michigan as you'll see in a minute. So um, Rufus could live here. Ru sadly, Rufus could live here. <laughs> um, minutes to everything. Right now, there isn't everything. There isn't, there's almost nothing except okay. the park. But one day there will be everything There again. will be restaurants, shops, parks, museums, culture, etc. And public transportation right outside your door. You're close to the L. You can get anywhere. Right, and that's Lakeshore Drive right in front of it, so you can go. Okay. Then, hold on. Problem is this is okay, there we go. And so that's your view, I'm sorry. Isn't that an okay view? It's lovely. Lovely, that's um, Navy Pier, so think of the fireworks. Um, it's, it's like you're living on the beach in California. It's pretty modern kitchen, um, very minimalist, but modern bedroom. Look at all that west facing light. Um, so then I said, Let's go to the Burbs. So I started in Glencoe, which is, an, uh, which is the furthest north of the Cook County. So I stayed in Cook County, the North gotcha. Shore, and stayed in Cook County. Um, it's the furthest north. And this is a four bedroom, four and, um, and a half bath house. So because they use the assessor's square feet, they can only use above ground. It's 2,500 square foot above ground, but there's additional space in the basement and it's finished basement. And look at the size lot. That's a 75 by 100 lot. It's a shallower lot than you'll find in Chicago, but it's, mu it's much wider. So it's a nice mm -hmm. wide. You've got a nice front yard. You've got a little bit, as you'll see. I'm, and um, so reasons to live here. Um, it's blocks from the lake and shopping in Glencoe. There are park and tennis courts, uh, they say across the street, and you get New Trier High School, okay? That's a part of your taxes. And the taxes are 20000 20,500, okay? So this is what you get. You get a pretty house, needs some updating, um, but perfectly livable, and there's your backyard. You've got some outdoor space. Okay. Um, then I go to Wilmette, which is the closest in, the next one's gonna be Winnetka, um, the closest of the three. Um, and it's all, and I used um, Nutrier High School as sort of the, you know, the selling point. Four, point, uh, four bedrooms, four and, a, uh, four and a half baths. It didn't specify square feet, but it's a 50 by 122 foot lot. So a nice big lot. That's like a double Chicago lot. Right. 
um, and the taxes are just under $20,000 a year. It's Northern Wilmette, it's, so it's close to um, Kenilworth, and um, actually, and I think actually, because Kenilworth is further east, so maybe it's closer to Winneka, but there you go. So it's a, it's mm -hmm. a nice, um, little more traditional house, but you see you're, you're not far from the house next door. Right. Wilmette is, is sort of a, not quite urban, but urban-ish. And this picture is from the, um, as you can see out the back door, the snow from the winter. <laughs> but there's something that are. But it's pretty, and I, I really, I thought this was a pretty kitchen. So it's got a little office space um, back there. It's just a pretty eat-in kitchen. And then this is your backyard. So attractive backyard, two right. seating areas, space to spread out. Then I chose this because this is, oh my God, this is a project. But look at that lot. That's a 168 by 240. I mean, huge. And the, tw and the taxes are almost $30,000. It is sold as is. I mean, it is a project. Now, what I like about it for somebody my age is... No it's a ranch. It's, it's a ranch, but this, there is a, a bedroom up here. Oh, is it? Okay. I think it's for the bad child. The <laughs> <laughs> or the lucky <laughs> child. If uh, you're going to need a riding mower for that one. Yeah, long. wow. I'm curious so, what's in the back of the house since that's so much in the front. Oh, that's the back of the house. Oh, that is the back of the house. That's the back. Uh, oh, 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 wow. That is a big yard. This is the front. Yeah, that's okay. Big, big, I mean, you need a riding mower and you need to ride it all the time. <laughs> Or get some goats. Don't laugh. I was good at the riding mower as a kid. <laughs> so nice big rooms. Um, really stately space. See, this is the kind of project I would take on. Well, this is pretty fun. So, I mean, that's the kitchen. So there's room to spread out in this kitchen. But my Ripped God. wallpaper. That's a sign that it's a bargain. It's a bargain. <laughs> I mean, look at Oh, pretty that. stone patio. Yeah, that's lovely. So all, but all of these you can get for about a million dollars. So I'm, they're on the market for just over, but you listen, you can get them for, for about a million. So that's what I got. Excellent. So I am going to show you what I found. Now I chose, all right, do you see this okay? No, here we go. Yeah. All right. The first one I have is Naperville. I chose three suburbs that when my clients are thinking about going west, this is where they're thinking about. So the first one I did was the farthest away, Naperville. And one of the reasons to, to move to Naperville is it's, um, you know, well-priced. Naperville has for many years been named one of the top uh, 30 towns in the U.S. or top 10 towns in the U.S. to live in. Okay, so I thought that what a good place to take start. Your, I'll take your word on it. Okay, if you live in Naperville, plan on an hour commute. Okay, at least you are by train, uh, by train and by car, both. Now okay. most of my clients and friends who live in Naperville take the train in. There is an express. So if the timing works for you, then you can get on the express. And I wanted to show you this home I'm going to show you is here. And here's where the train is. Okay. And that's a schlep. Here's the house. 815 Iris Lane is currently on the market for 950. This is a Beard and Warner listing. Taxes are 24,000 a year on 950. So you're paying higher taxes oh, in wow. Naperville. Uh, it's a five bedroom, four and a half bath, and it's 5,000 square feet. It's a nice sized house. It's got the center staircase. Looks like it's a wood mode cabinetry here. And this is pretty typical. You know, you've got your two story den area, big closets, which, you know, you don't find in the city so much. Backyard, not so big. Okay. Now, I wanted to show you. So the median sales price in Naperville is $390. And month supply of homes for sale is $3.5 right now. And that's all homes. Okay, that's not just. Can you it's hear me? All homes. 
it, it's also because they have they have attached properties in Naperville too. They've got that condos. Is, so that's that correct. Down the price. And, but but right 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 right. So anyway, yeah. So that's that. The next suburb I chose was Hinsdale, and Hinsdale is located right here close to the Burlington Northern Railroad if people are taking the train in and again you're probably looking at 40 minutes maybe 30 if you're thriving and it's off uh, you know regular rush hour time so you can see where we are we're a little bit west a little bit south very close to the 294 uh, 54 and you're between 55 and 290 so the house I chose here is 902 Monroe, five minutes to the train. And you can see it's close to the Ogden Tri-State. And this is new construction, four bedroom, three bath, 2919 square feet. And I just wanted to show you, it's not a huge house for a million dollars. Since deals a more expensive area. So you've got, uh, don't even have a formal living room here. So you've got a little office you could use as a sitting room but it's dining, kitchen, breakfast, family room on the first level and four bedrooms up. But I wanted to show you another one and that is 216 Grant. This is a four bedroom, three and a half bath built in 1926. And uh, it's under contract for 995. We don't know the sales price and it's got a pretty tree lot, yeah, yeah. lovely kitchen. Yeah. Interesting. So Hinsdale, the average sales price is eight thirteen seven five zero, and it's more of a single family home community. Um, and this is what prices have done. Uh, they've come up and then they've dipped down a little bit. Um, and this is the month supply. They're 8.6 months worth of supply. So they're also like the city, more of a buyer's market in Hinsdale. Oh, and then the third place, I wanted to show you was Oak Park and Oak, um, Oak Park is the first suburb west if you don't count Berwyn and Cicero and it's, it's like a 30 minute commute um, it's um, depending on rush hour it could be a little bit more and you've also got good trains and 703 Northeast Avenue is the one that I chose and here's here's where it's located this is pretty cool um, so this is the downtown of Oak Park. It's up here in a very residential area. Oak Park River Forest High School is here with the uh, rec center here. Just a neat area and look at that house. That's a five bedroom, four and a half bath, 6,000 square foot home for 998 with taxes of 30,000. You notice that these taxes are going up. They were 24 in Hinsdale, now they're 30,000 here. But it is a big and lovely home with gorgeous historic details, cute little backyard. And this was blown up, so it's difficult to see. But you've got some floor plan flaws. And I think this is why this one's been on the market for a while. See the kitchen tucked back here. It's not a great room area that most people want. Most people with their family moving from the city to the suburbs for the bigger house want that great room, right? You've got to come through to the family room here. Uh, it's got a huge dining room, which probably most people would use as a formal living or I don't know. And the sunroom here is, and a study. It's, it, it's an interesting floor plan. You'd have to work with it. Okay. In Oak Park prices, the average sales price is $345. i have been showing high end in Naperville and high end in Oak Park. You can really get a nice single family home in the five to $700,000 range in both of these towns. Um, and here you go, 4.4 uh, month supply. Supply has dropped in the last month. I had a, a buyer in, who was looking in Oak Park this summer and Oak Park is on fire. Yeah, well uh, it was, you know, Dennis Rodkin did an article in Cranes not that long ago talking about how nobody was buying in Oak Park and it was, and that's not the case anymore, right? Houses are going fast. And how and there and here's why, um, because things were so slow for a long time, people got smart about pricing, and so mm -hmm. now people are pricing their homes where they're likely to sell more often, and right. so they're going they're going really quickly. 
um, I've got, and, and you, you made a couple of, um, of great points about Oak Park. I've got a friend who's about to sell her place that's, and it's a big house. You could raise, totally raise a family there. And they're going on because it needs, you know, it needs some updating, but it, in the high fours, low fives. I mean, you can get a lot of value. However, like you said, um, the property taxes are higher because it's close to the city, et cetera. But let's talk about just really briefly about what goes into property taxes. Mm -hmm. Is the taxing districts. So even in taxes will be different in different parts of a town based on what taxing districts they're in. Sometimes you'll be in the same town, but in a different township. Right. Just be in the same, you know, like in Wilmette, there are a bunch of townships that, that are um, touch within the city or the, I think it's the city of Wilmette. So it, it will depend on the taxing, the, everyone will have the Cook County um, Forest Preserve, but you'll have different taxing districts, which will impact the level of tax you pay. And that's right. why it's sort of all over the map. It's not like it, every $1 million house will pay the same amount of right. tax in a particular town. It really depends on right. taxing. So, it feels arbitrary. It feels really arbitrary. Mm -hmm. What I noticed between the houses you showed us and the houses toward the West is you get the new Trier district, which so many people want, but there's smaller lots except for the one that you showed me, but that was a house that needed work. But you know what I mean? So it was a little bit different. That house done probably would have been a million and a half to two, right? But, um, but my point is, generally speaking, you get a bigger lot than the city but not a huge lot necessarily. You're paying higher taxes and you've got to commute. Um, and then if you're going west, Oak Park, generally the lots aren't much bigger. No. You know, a little bit bigger, but not hugely bigger than the city. Right. Um, Hinsdale, uh, you're paying a lot of money for your house and you've got the commute. In Naperville, you've got a huge commute. Naperville's got good, you know, public schools, you know, and reasonably priced homes with the average being in the 390s. But again, you know, you're giving up, you're giving up a lot of two hours plus a day if you're in Naperville. Just a shout out to Oak Park River Forest High School. That's a, one of the very good high schools too. So yeah. we've chosen right. towns with good public schools for which, I mean, that's what you're paying for often is right. think about it like this is my private school i'm paying mm -hmm. that taxes exactly right and these by the me by the way are not the only towns there are lots of other places i just sold a place in western springs uh that was three hundred and ninety thousand three bedroom two and a half bath um so you know here's the thing the biggest piece of advice i would give my clients my potential clients is just come to us and talk about it. And um, I, I don't do listings in the suburbs and sometimes I will refer out when they buy, but I will certainly do that first pass with my clients so that we can check out different areas so they can be familiar to make a good decision. And um, so if they're not sure where they want to go, it still makes sense to give us the first call to really talk high line, uh, as they make their decision. What are your thoughts? I will, I will represent somebody in a buy in the suburbs. Yeah. But I, like you, I will reach out to my colleagues at Baird and Warner to make sure that I'm um, giving them the right advice about a suburb, about the schools, about square foot, doing my mm -hmm. research. I'll double check my research just to make sure I've got it right. Right. Um, and then I will do some listings where I feel comfortable, but I, you know, I just sold a home in Wheaton and I was not the listing agent of record. I referred that to a colleague that does business primarily in Wheaton. So, um, yeah, that's that. I hope that gives our viewers an insight into what it's like to buy in the suburbs, dollar for dollar, your basic million dollar house. And, one last uh, thing. One last thing. What's that? To our friends who are thinking about 
moving from the, who have been thinking about moving from the suburbs into the city, now is the time to list your home. The number of homes sale, selling is higher. All of a sudden, this is a good opportunity in most suburbs to put your home on the market at the right price. If, if you are looking to sell, now is the time that people are looking because of low interest rates, because of COVID, et cetera, do it now. Right. Don't miss right. it because I have a feeling once this is done, people will be like, oh yeah, I wanna be in the city again. <laughs> yeah, very good advice. Thank you very much, Kyle. This is Ann Rossley with Kyle Harvey of Beard and Warner doing our Monday morning coffee. Uh, we do this every Monday at 6.30 or so, depending on how good we are with our tech. Thanks for hanging with us this morning as we got back on the saddle. And uh, we look forward to helping you with your real estate needs. Kyle, thanks so much. Thank you. Good okay. seeing you again. Yes. I, take, I look forward to seeing you this week and uh, next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.